Till recently, patients diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, often called IPF, a progressive, debilitating, and ultimately fatal disease of the lungs, have suffered with life-limiting symptoms and minimal treatment options. Today, Dr. Charles Chan, a leading IPF researcher and respirologist with the University Health Network in Toronto, shares exciting news that offers hope for patients living with this debilitating disease. I went for my annual physical and the doctor heard a rattling in my lungs and uh, three weeks later they uh, gave me the sentence, death, three to five years. Six years ago, Barry was diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, abbreviated as IPF, is a special type of scarring in the lung whereby we don't know what's causing it, but the scarring is actually carrying on uh, indefinitely in the patients. Being a Shriner, I belonged to a thing called an Oriental Band, and all it was was fun and laughs and, and great times and everything else. And I found out I could no longer blow the instrument, which meant I could no longer be in the band. IPF has significant impact on the patient's quality of life. As a result of the scarring in the lungs, the lungs become very stiff. The patient then start experiencing difficulty breathing. They often complain of shortness of breath. Initially, with moderate exertion, such as running or jogging, and then, as the disease become more severe, they can then start getting the shortness of breath even on day-to-day -day activities. In addition to the shortness of breath, the other very common symptoms that the patients have with IPF is a nagging dry cough that refuses to go away and is worsened when they exert themselves. I noticed when I went up and downstairs, I'd, I'd lose a little breath and everything. But at that time, I was 72 years old. And so is it the, the old age or is it the pulmonary that uh, is the problem? You don't know. The diagnosis of IPF often is delayed. The reason is the symptoms are often nonspecific, cough and shortness of breath. So frequently, it takes many months and sometimes years until the symptoms become quite severe. That's when the patients start pushing for a diagnosis. Lack of awareness about the disease makes early diagnosis even more challenging. For many years, Canadian IPF patients had no place to turn for information, resources and support. When I was diagnosed, we went on the internet looking for support and information and there was nothing in Canada. To raise awareness of IPF, Davidson started the Canadian Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation in 2009. If you don't know about the disease, uh, you, you can't do anything about it. Increased awareness, developments in diagnostic imaging technologies and managing the lung health of people living with IPF have helped improve the prognosis. If you were to ask me 10 or 15 years ago, we would typically say from the time of the diagnosis, on the average, they may live somewhere between three to five years. When you ask me now, I would say that it's probably four to six years or slightly longer. That's the case because we are probably making the diagnosis a little bit earlier. And so if we are actually picking up the patient a little bit earlier on with the IPF, then there's no question the survival and the outlook is a little bit better. Currently, the only cure for IPF is a lung transplant. It isn't for everyone and should only be considered as a last resort. However, there are ways to help manage the lung health of people living with IPF. Unfortunately, we have limited organs. There's only a small number of patients of IPF that would qualify for lung transplant. Our strategy in preserving the lungs of patients with IPF is not to actually stop or slow down the scarring. We basically try to be preventive in terms of our strategy. Flu shot, pneumonia vaccine, treat any infection in the lungs aggressively. If they smoke, get them to quit. If they're overweight and they don't exercise, get them to lose weight, go on regular exercise program. And if they have cough due to reflux or maybe post-nasal drip, we manage those. And as long as we do that, we actually relieve some of the symptoms and we actually are able to get them to function at a higher level. I go up to the coffee shop and I decide to walk home as opposed to drive. And uh, that helped a lot because I was able to walk on a straight surface without climbing up and down. And I was able to maintain my breath to a reasonable degree. And I felt I was processing oxygen. Even though the prognosis now compared to 10 or 15 years ago is better, IPF is still a very serious disease. Just set your mind and decide you're going to fight and do it. And in that process of deciding that, that will determine where you go and what you do. Don't sit back. You sit back, you're going to go downhill. Fight. The Canadian Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation is a very important resource for patients with IPF. 
To find out more about living with IPF and managing your lung health, speak to your doctor and visit cpff.ca.